I want to start by saying uh, congratulations on a fantastic season. I loved this whole season. I cannot wait to see where this thing goes. Thanks so much. That, uh, that's amazing to hear. Amazing to hear. It's, uh, it's been a labor of love, so that's, that's great. This is going to be a very highly spoiler-filled interview, and let's just get started. Um, when we spoke at the Junket with Ridley, uh, yeah. you mentioned you had an idea for like five seasons, yeah. if you could actually do it. Is that still the case? Like you have an arc of five seasons? Yes. Yes, it is. If I was forced to, you know, truncate that arc, it could be truncated. But, you know, I think, you know, selectively taking certain events out and put them, putting certain things in. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good long, you know, five, six season arc for the whole thing in terms of the map that exists now. Yes. Right. So do you, as it stands right now, do you know how the series ends? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. I am so curious. Jump, <laughs> jumping into, I'm going to ask you some, I'm going to read you some questions that I normally don't do because I actually prepped for this interview. Yes. And uh, so if you see me looking down, it's because I have questions. So yeah, um, let, let's start. Uh, the first thing is after season, the season one finale, you introduce mother's baby which is yeah. not at all what people are expecting. I yes. am curious if the baby is a smaller version of the creature we see in episode one of the fossil of that snake. It is that that breed of snake with some differences. It's a hybrid version of that. Yes, there is definitely a connection there. It's definitely uh, DNA is in common, but there is a little bit of a difference because this one comes from mother, so it has you know, some attributes that some of the snakes that originally uh, existed on the planet do not. Uh, you mentioned in, I don't think, it's not the finale, it's one of the last episodes of the season, there, you mentioned that basically uh, they, the humans, got blueprints for, uh, for essentially mother and just yeah. built without really knowing uh, what was this final function. It, yeah. How much is that a hint towards things to come? It's a big hint, for sure. Um, and there's definitely, I think, you know, we lay out in season one sort of the, the this kind of mystery in terms of where did this technology come from? Uh, the Mithraic, you know, discovered it, encrypted in their scriptures were these, uh, these bl blueprints, essentially, these designs for, you know, various technologies, which they proceeded to build and then used to uh, try, almost won this war. I mean, they basically did win the war, but they also forced the end of the world uh, in the process. Uh, so that we do know. We do know that there is some, and we also know that there seems to be a connection uh, between some of that technology and what we have uh, found so far on Kepler, 22B. I'm curious, why does everyone go to the planet that everyone is going to? Is that from the scriptures? Is that? Yeah, yeah. I think in the scriptures, there, you know, in addition to all these technological blueprints, there is, you know, actual, you know, uh, you know, coordinates for this planet as well. And it also happens to be, I think, that plus the idea that, you know, throughout their own, you know, space exploration, satellites, and this and that, they know that this is the only place to go where you can survive without the aid of technology. All the other possibilities apparently have been crossed off the list by this time. Uh, in the future seasons, do you plan on showing more on what happened to Earth and uh, sort of what built to where we are? Yeah, absolutely. There'll be more flashbacks um, and perhaps, you know, some present day uh, Earth uh, peaks as well see uh, what might be going on uh, there after, uh, you know, after everything is over, uh, because there are still uh, necromancers on Earth. Uh, they were left behind, most of them. Uh, the Mithraic didn't, obviously didn't want to bring any with them. They were done with them, uh, didn't trust them. Uh, so they left them on Earth, uh, except for the one they found waiting for them on 22B. Uh, so there is that. Ah, that that's a good hint. Um, yeah. Uh, with stuff like the voice of soul, um, which has affected certain people, um, yeah. do you know how all of that is going to play out in terms of, because obviously um, with Travis's character, he's going kind of crazy, yes, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, he is. And, you know, with Travis, it's interesting, Travis's character, um, because he was a little bit crazy when he got there. You know what I mean? He was already a former child soldier who then changed his face and spent 12 years pretending to be um, this, you know, religious captain. And, you know, it has all of these 
issues to begin with. And then he starts hearing the voice and goes, you know, where he goes. But I think that's, that's kind of a clue. The idea that, you know, if you really look at it, uh, there is some connection to be made in terms of who hears the voice and when, uh, and how many, I really, I think only one person can hear it at a time. Uh, I have, yeah. I have noticed that, yeah. um, it, it has gone, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot that you have not revealed yet. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So who, are you willing to say who actually impregnated mother? I, I can't say who, but I can say how. I, I think she was digitally impregnated while she was inside of the simulation. Um, so being that she is advanced as she is, um, you know, just by getting this, basically the instructions for how to build something, you know, in, inside of herself, it's like a 3D printer. And if she can get the materials, you know, in this case, one of the materials is plasma, you know, human blood uh, to, to build this thing. It, it can be done, you know, uh, in a very different way than, you know, a human being would create a baby. Uh, she could kind of create anything inside of herself uh, if given, you know, the proper instructions and given the right materials. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, something that I've also wondered is obviously with her eyes, that's how she becomes the necromancer. Um, yeah. What is it about, have you sort of thought about the technology with the eyes and how this all works? Because without the eyes, she can be killed in a millisecond. Yeah, she's vulnerable without the eyes. The eyes are sort of like, sort of like the plutonium, you know, in the bomb. It, it's like she has all of the circuitry. You, you need all of that stuff. If you just have the eyes, uh, it's just kind of like you, you have some plutonium in your hands. But they, they are essential. It's kind of like, or if you have some you know, hardware and you need like a dongle to make it work, you know, sort of thing. It's that kind of idea. So she has a lot of stuff, you know, built into her body, but it can't be, you know, utilized and activated without the eyes. Uh, I would imagine when you guys were writing uh, season one, when you're figuring it all out, there had to have been maybe possibly some changes, things you thought you were going to do that maybe for budget or for time or whatever reason you couldn't pull off. Mm -hmm. um, can you share any of that? Um, I'm trying to think, I think there were some things that, you know, I think in addition to mother's other abilities, you know, and you see a little bit of it, um, in the pilot, she is able to kind of make people see things that aren't there, you know, when she makes Campion see her as his dead sibling. Um, so there were some, there were a few more moments where she was making people see things that weren't there, uh, rather, you know, that were very expensive, uh, <laughs> that didn't get them. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, what is, can you say any more about the five-sided ship that is in the desert? Oh, yes. Uh, the pentagonal uh, temple. Um, well, I can say this. I can say that there are more of them uh, that, you know, according to the scriptures, there's five of them. There's five of them. And, uh, and in each of them is supposed to be hidden the answers to the, 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 the sort of the ultimate you know, the Mithraic mysteries, the, uh, the, the thing everybody's trying to uh, get to the bottom of. Um, but beyond that, I can't tell you too much more, uh, except that we will see, uh, we'll, we'll see another in season two. And uh, I think we'll get a lot more uh, kind of into what, the, what it is and how it works and all that good stuff. Uh, what should people take from the visions mother sees in the finale with the creatures by the hole in the ground and the other thing that I can't even describe in yes. what could be like a robot suit. I don't even know what that is. Yes, I can actually, I mean, that, that I feel like I can illuminate a little bit um, in terms of what it is. Um, so basically, you know, when she has that, that dream and she sees that thing and that, that weird kind of helmet robot head thing and, you know, it starts to, you know, the fuel blood starts gushing out of the, uh, the front of it, kind of the nozzle on the front. Um, what that is, uh, there is actually an android inside of that. It's, a, it's sort of like a birthing prison sort of thing. Uh, so their body's inside the pentagonal bottom half. <laughs> the top piece is a helmet that goes over the android. And the android then births a serpent out the nozzle. Um, so that's essentially what that is. That's kind of what she's seeing, this kind of foreshadowing of what's about to happen to her, but she can't quite put it together, uh, but until the very last moment. Uh, when it's too late. In the finale, you have the cave that Paul goes into. You see mother and father's ship. You see other things on the wall that are almost moving. Can you go into more detail about that? 
Not too much, except the idea that obviously there was obvious, you know, this is not a virgin planet, as we're coming to discover. There was a civilization here. And here we're seeing imagery that does suggest on some level that something that we know to have happened uh, 13 years ago. Uh, here we see depicted on a cave that was, you know, a drawing that was made several hundred thousand years ago. And how can that be? Um, so I think that's sort of the, uh, the question that is kind of presented there, but I can't answer it, but I mean, that's, uh, that's what it is. Is it, um, I don't think they're gonna answer me, but I'm just gonna ask, how <laughs> is, have there been other races that have responded to the message that obviously we got on planet Earth uh, that have arrived on this planet prior to humans? Um, I, I would say this is more of a human-centric uh, story in that sense. Yes, I would okay. say. I would say no, no. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and just answer that one. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Uh, I've been very curious uh, for the entire season why Campion has not been affected by the radioactive food. Yeah. Um, how much of a story point is that going to be as the as the series continues? Uh, a fairly significant one, yeah. I, I think it, it definitely has a lot to do with you know his 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 destiny on this planet and um, and the role he's going to play you know in the future. But uh, I can't, I, you know, and I will say, you know, it, it definitely uh, it, it's not so concealed in terms of the why of it all. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I think it, it is it is something we could potentially uh, figure out on some level. Um, but yeah, it, it will get, we, we definitely deal with it down the line and it, it pays off in a signif significant way. Got it. Um, what, uh, how is Marcus, how is our future seasons with Marcus with the way he is mentally right now? Uh, how is that sort of going to play out in season two? What can you tease? Well, you know, I think he's definitely, he, he's gone as crazy as one can go. So it, it, the question is, the, you know, where do you go from there? And then kind of what's the next step? He's kind of been broken down to nothing. You know, uh, you know, he was this man who was this, he grew up on earth as a child soldier. You know, he was completely powerless and he got to this planet. Suddenly he was hearing a voice and everyone was worshiping him and, you know, and he lost his mind, you know, essentially. Uh, and in the process, though, he's kind of been broken down into this, you know, into these, into his most, you know, essential elements, as it were. Uh, so I think in season two, we're going to see a sort of uh, a rebirth, as it were, sort of a new, uh, uh, he's going to kind of redefine himself uh, in season two. Uh, everyone throughout the season sees visions. They see yeah. things, you know, some of the kids that have previously died. Um, what can you say about these visions that everyone has been seeing? You know, obviously, I think that they're 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 all significant. Um, you know, I think there's obviously, you know, something uh, something on this planet that you know, if you're tuned into a certain wavelength, you, you know, you are able to to see things, see things that might be coming. Um, but beyond that, you know, I, I, I can't say too much about it. I think uh, those sorts of things are, are kind of what they are. <laughs> of course. No, I get it. I'm just trying to drill and see what I can no, actually I love it. I love it. I, yeah. I you know, um, so uh, what's up actually with the planet? Paul tells his mom they have to stay on this side to yeah. give birth to the, to the baby. Yes. Um, and, he says it, and he says it was, so, you know, soul that is like, you got to do it on this side. Yes. Um, anything you want to say about that? Well, I would say, you know, uh, very much like Earth, you know, every region of this planet is very different, you know, so though we know what there is, you know, a lot of what there is to know about the region we spent uh, season one in, the rest of the planet is, you know, quite mysterious uh, in terms of all that. So, you know, I think, and also too, I think you have to think, you know, I think one could also imagine that uh, other things in terms of the hallucinations, the voice, so on and so forth, uh, when you move to another part of the planet, those things are going to shift as well. That, you know, we're dealing with things that, you know, that seem supernatural and, and maybe they are, but I think everything also has a technological aspect to it uh, that you could apply here in a, in a sort of really um, calculated way. Got it. Uh, what can you actually say about the history of the planet that maybe hasn't been re revealed in the season um, and especially the creatures that are devolving. 
Yes. Well, I think, you know, the one thing we've learned, uh, or one of the things we've learned are these creatures used to be human beings. And, uh, and one might even imagine, uh, for all we know, that maybe human beings evolved here first. Uh, we don't know. Um, so there is definitely a strong connection uh, with this place and, you know, in humanity, um, uh, as we've come to understand it. Um, but, you know, the, the idea here, too, is that these, for some reason, something has caused these human beings to, you know, kind of turn around and start going the other direction, devolving, you know, but the question is why, you know, why would that happen? You know, what, what, what purpose would that serve? Uh, or what, you know, what, what, what could, you know, what is that? Uh, we don't know, but we do know that that's exactly what it was. This planet was populated by human beings. And for some reason, they've all devolved into these more animalistic versions of ourselves, you know, these kind of, you know, walking around in all fours, you know, very animalistic, completely devoid of all the things that, you know, today we, you know, Harold is making humans humans. Uh, are mother and father going to be upset they didn't kill the baby when they had the chance? Uh, more, well, I won't answer that, but I, I would just, it definitely seems like that, given the, the last shot of the, the, the finale there, it does seem like that one would regret that. Yeah, that they, they, they missed an opportunity to, uh, to tr at least try and destroy it uh, while it was small, uh, because it's no longer that for sure. So, uh, yeah, I imagine there's a lot of regret there. Well, of course, we don't know if mother and father even, you know, what becomes of them after they're shot out of the uh, out of the hole there on the other side of the planet. But uh, sure, I'm gonna go up. Th I'm gonna go up there on a ledge due to their performances as actors. They will survive into season two. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably uh, I'm, from, I'm, a, from a TV standpoint. I think that's a yeah, pretty safe. Assumption. Um, I am willing to wager they will be around. Um, mm -hmm. how did they all survive going through the middle of the planet? Well, again, yeah, it's like you can look at the supernatural uh, possibilities and then you can look at are there, you know, other things that could be at play here that that would make that possible, you know, because uh, we, you know, we're saying, OK, this is a planet. And what, what do we know about planets? And we're applying all of that to this planet. But this planet is very, very far away from this one and may have attributes that our planet does not, despite the fact that, you know, it's a Goldilocks planet. And, you know, on the surface, it does seem to have a lot in common with Earth. Uh, but you know, that's on the outside, you know, like I've said, uh, this planet is kind of like a haunted house and it's got a whole ton of secrets, you know, a whole lot that goes along with it that, you know, the people who just moved in aren't really aware of yet. Um, so I think that would speak to the, you know, what happens here, this, this idea that they have passed through, shot out the other side. But again, I would say that this, this is not like, uh, this is not like earth in the sense that, um, taking a trip through the middle of it is uh, patently impossible. <laughs> or, Got it. You know, well, now I just sort of figured out how you can connect um, different groups in season two, if you can travel through the middle, you know? Well, well it is what well, yeah, they managed to do it. Yes. Yes. So I think it's, it's not, I wouldn't recommend it as a, you know, just uh, taking a jaunt back and forth that uh, might not survive, but yes, sure. it can be done. It can yeah. Be you done. also had a huge spaceship show up at the end too. So, yeah. Everything, everything is possible. Um, yeah. What can you say about the tropical side? Well, um, it's fairly mysterious at this point in the story, for sure. We all know, uh, we know that this is sort of the most bountiful place on the planet. So everyone <laughs> believes this is where, you know, it seems like whoever is able to plant their flag and really, um, you know, stake their claim to the tropical zone may become the dominant force on this planet, you know, forever, you know, kind of thing. It's like the that book, uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel, about, you know, about Earth, and you just the idea of, you know, where people, you know, just by chance end up evolving on our planet geographically, and what, you know, what, you know, what they have there, you know, what materials and weather and all of these things that, you know, kind of come into play, then, you know, thousands of years later, they end up, you know, dominating the planet because of it. Um, and, you know, these folks coming to Kepler know that quite well. So they're, they're trying to, uh, stake their claim to the tropical zone. Though, of course, tropical zone also has this other weird uh, attribute, which is the electromagnetic field that prevents anyone from landing directly in the tropical zone, uh, which again might, which also plays into your earlier question, I think about, you know, different sides of the planet and the voice and uh, things like that and how these things might uh, interact with each other. Yeah, I'm so looking forward already to season two. Uh, <laughs> was the atheist ship always going to arrive in the finale? could be 
thousands of people. It could be 10 people. Exactly. So we don't really know. Uh, We also kind of got the impression that the atheists weren't as advanced as the Mithraic. The Mithraic had all of these, uh, you know, like quantum gravity, you know, propulsion machine, you know, that stuff was in their scriptures as well. Uh, what I, one thing I will say about season two is that this ship was actually built by the Mithraic. Uh, it was hijacked while it was under construction uh, on Earth. So the, the people aboard the ship are, in fact, atheists. But, uh, but again, in terms of the technology, it's, uh, it's more uh, Mithraic stuff. Got it. Uh, the snake creature is pretty large as it exits the ship. Yeah. How much larger can it get? Um, I won't answer that, though. I would say it's pretty darn large right now, you, you know, but uh, I, I'll, I'll leave that one open. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Godzilla, but I also uh, <laughs> I also like to keep things manageable. So we'll see. <laughs> Got it. Um, well, jumping into season two for a second. Um, when did you know you were getting the pickup versus when they officially announced it? Um, a little bit earlier. You know, I, I mean... Uh, it's kind of a hard question to answer, you know, I think, uh, but uh, I always just assume that, you know, it's, it's just going to keep going. Cause I know I, if I don't, if I stop thinking about it, then if it does keep going, I'll, it'll be too late for me to figure it all out. <laughs> so I just have to keep, uh, keep assuming it's going to keep going until someone tells me to stop. So uh, that's all I can do. So I guess my thing is, so where are you in the writing process of season two? Um, I think in terms of the planning of it, I'm fairly well into it. Fairly well into it. It's fairly worked out, you know, in terms of the outlining and uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, scripts aren't done. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> scripts aren't done, no. I got it. Uh, do you have a plan of when you might be filming? Um, I can't say specifically, but, you know, hopefully quite soon, you know. I mean, we'll see how things go, uh, you know, with the virus and, and, and you know, just uh, best practices and all that good stuff. But, uh uh, hopefully soon. Uh, I think uh, that's that's our intent to, uh, you know, get going as soon as we can. Well, I was going to say, what's interesting about your show is that it's not a show that requires hundreds of extras. Right. And, you know, like you have very, you, you have a small cast in, you know, in terms of trying to pull this off. Does that make it easier to shoot in, in the COVID times? Um, you know, I guess we'll know when, when, when we get there, but uh, one would assume so. Yeah. I mean, obviously crowds and you know lots and lots of humans and small spaces uh all very bad so uh we'll have to see you know i mean yeah i think we are bringing in more people for season two so uh there'll be a little bit more in terms of the the population but uh but still i think you know compared to something that's about earth you know where we're you know crowds 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 no we're lucky in that sense yeah uh, what was your shooting schedule on season one? And did HBO give you like any additional days for season two? Um, I think it'll be fairly similar. We had a pretty good schedule for season one, uh, fairly good amount of time to, to get done what we needed to get done. And, you know, Ridley really set the, uh, set the pace for season one. And he is just like the most efficient director known to man. And he was, you know, Starts in the morning, boom, 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 boom. Gets more done than you thought possible, and you're everyone's done. You know, same time every day. You know, and I think it just the efficiency and the crews there are just incredible. Everybody is just like so on it. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's just going to be that same sort of thing where it's just well-oiled machine and uh, and uh, just keep cranking it out. I think the other good thing is we don't have to do a lot of night stuff because uh, we're on an alien planet, so we can kind of create. A, we have three moons. Uh, which, you know, creates a very, you know, specific sort of night. Uh, and that helps a lot. Uh, that, that's where things get tough, especially now with, uh, with COVID and everything. I thought, I'm sure all the tougher. You didn't actually answer, so I'll do a little further. Um, <laughs> was it like an eight-day shooting schedule? Was it a 12-day? Uh, it was, I think it was somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. Uh, I read the, the pilot in episode two is a little bit longer. And then it, it got a little bit shorter for the, uh, for the following blocks. Uh, and we cross, uh, cross boarded it. So we did, you know, two at a time. Completely. And, uh, but yeah, it was a little, somewhere in between there. Are you going to bring back um, any of the directors you had on season one? Um, and if I could sort of say, will Ridley be coming back? Um, we will see. Uh, Ridley's extraordinarily busy right now. He's, you know, he's finishing his movie and he's got a movie to do right after that. Um, He has expressed interest, but I don't know that the schedule is going to work out, but, you know, who the heck knows. 
Um, and directors, we're, we're figuring that out now. We're going to hopefully uh, have some clarity soon. But, uh, but right now, we don't, we're not sure. Well, what's interesting is at, when you do the first season, you really don't know what the show is going to be. No one really knows what the show is. But yeah. now you actually can show directors, well, this is what we made. Do you yeah. want to play in our, play, in our sandbox? You know? Yeah, because exactly. it has a very specific, you know, obviously style, I think, because we really wanted to, you know, do something where, you know, Ridley sets the style and, you know, the kind of the template for how this is going to work. And every director that comes in after obviously can, you know, is going to bring their own, you know, flavor to it. But at the same time, we do want to kind of make it feel as consistent as possible, you know, and where it's not so much like every episode feels like it's, you know, a different color or a different coming from a different place. Uh, really want to just play like one long movie where you don't really, it's not so uh, noticeable, you know, the director's coming and going. Um, so hopefully we can maintain that for, the, for season two. When you make the first season of any show, it is a learning process in terms of how much you can shoot in your schedule, what the money you have for visual effects. You know, it's basically figuring out the infrastructure of how to make a show. What yeah. did you learn making season one that you hope to sort of benefit from while making season two? Um, I guess uh, it's, it, let me see here. Well, definitely learned a lot in terms of, you know, the types of, you know, special effects that we can, you know, that can be done cheaply and those that cannot, and, you know, how to kind of cheat things a little bit to kind of uh, just get more bang for your buck in terms of all the effects, you know, we're trying to do in this show. Uh, but at the same time, trying to do, some of them, you know, practically and, you know, and just figuring out ways to uh, just to be as efficient as possible to just get everything, everything on the screen. Um, in terms of like specific lessons, it's interesting. We, I would say that the one thing I can say is that season two will take place in a very different uh, region on the planet. So a lot of the lessons that I learned in uh, season one won't even apply. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, you know, like I've been in, uh, you know, uh, California in season one, and now I'm going to, you know, Michigan for season two. And it just, there's, you know, uh, the climate is very different and uh, the geography and all that good stuff. So uh, uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of those lessons will be moot uh, in this case. At least uh, how does it work with the executives at HBO Max? So you, you obviously delivered season one. They, they saw it, they loved it, they gave you another season. How much do you have to go in and sort of pitch them on your vision for season two and you know all that stuff and how much is it you know them saying oh you did a really good job go for it yeah uh it's a little bit of both i think you're always going to have to tell them you know what the plan is i think um at least i do i, I haven't gotten to a place in my career where they're just like just go for it and we'll you know we'll we trust <laughs> whatever you want don't even tell us what you're gonna do uh, i got so i had to work it out and pitch them and, you know, and pitch them again. And, uh, um, but they have faith, you know, I think it's not as case where I think we both, they know what kind of show we're making. They're not trying to make it into a different show. I think they just wanted to, you know, help make it as great as it can be and, you know, give it the most oxygen it can have and, you know, all the things it needs to have a good life. Um, so they've been really, they've been really great partners. They haven't tried to, I think that's my biggest, thing is that I, you know they could have come in and been like all right well let's try and you know change this around make it this a little bit more like this so it's a little bit more recognizable a little easier to sell or whatever it is and they, they didn't do that so um you know it's been it's been great in that respect but yes i still have to kind of like okay here's here's what the plan is here's the story here's where this goes here's where that goes and just kind of make everybody feel you know comfortable that uh you know, I'm not just some madman driving them into, uh, you know, a brick wall <laughs> somewhere. Completely. It's my last question for you because I'm out of time. Um, you had 10 episodes in the first season. Was it ever going to be eight or a different number? And will it be 10 episodes again with season two? Um, remains to be seen. Uh, but no, it was always going to be 10 for season one. Uh, season two, we'll see. Uh, could potentially be eight, but we'll see. Eight or 10. I think eight is the new 10 now is what I'm hearing for, uh, for streaming. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is um, I personally think that more people are willing to invest their time when it's shorter seasons. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously it's the, it's our, nobody has time for anything now. And uh, so, but you know, I think uh, you need enough time to really, and I think eight is enough. I think that's about as short as I could go and still feel like we're telling a complete, 
you know, novel of a story. Uh, you know, because I my the show I did previously, uh, the Red Road, I did many years ago. We only did six, uh, six episode seasons, which was which was cool, but it always felt a little too short. It was almost just kind of like yeah, you just need one or two to really hammer it home. You know, it always felt like you were being, uh, you know, kind of pulled off the stage a little too early there. But I think eight is kind of a, is a good number. But 10 is, is, is good, too. Listen, I really want to say sincerely, I loved this first season. Uh, oh, thank you so much, much for uh, getting on the Zoom call with me to discuss uh, spoilers. And, and hopefully down the road, we will do this again. That would be great.